Episode 5, The Mitochondrial Matrix, Power, Peptides, and Patent Games, How Your Mitochondria Are Being Hijacked, and Not by Aliens This Time. Let's take a trip, not to Cabo, but into the microscopic jungle of your cells, where the real danger lurks. Deep inside your cytoplasm, past the nucleus, and beneath the sanitized surface of your high school biology textbook, sits the mitochondria. They told you it was just the powerhouse of the cell. Cute. Turns out it's more like the Pentagon meets a drug lab. A tightly guarded command center running your metabolism, managing your energy, and sometimes getting hijacked. There are cartels targeting your cells too, you know. And now, someone's been messing with your mitochondrial mojo. Think gene silencers, drug patents, and research papers conveniently buried under a stack of industry-funded propaganda. Enter the peptides. Secret agents of cellular disease. Tiny, potent, and for the most part, unpatentable. This is the part big pharma hopes you'll skip, but you're not skipping it, are you? I'm Dr. Kristen Lindgren, and welcome back to The Peptide Files. The Mitochondrial Power Players Mott's C, the metabolic ninja born from the mysterious depths of mitochondrial DNA. Yes, that renegade loop you inherited exclusively from your mother. MOTC is the first peptide we've discovered that says, who needs nuclear DNA when we've got mitochondria running black ops? What it does activates AMPK, your cellular energy sensor and metabolic switch, increases fat oxidation, translation, burns fat even if you're not sprinting up a hill with. Who's that guy? Like David Goggins? Come on. Five motherfucking miles. Five fifty. Come on. Great work. Thank you. Improves insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake. Crosses the nuclear membrane, which is basically the biochemical equivalent of a teenager breaking into the Pentagon with a library card. This is the clinical gold. MOTC has been shown to reverse diet-induced obesity and metabolic dysfunction in mouse models, improves endurance, muscle performance, and mitochondrial density. Emerging data suggests roles in aging, stress resilience, and lifespan. Why you haven't heard of it? It's natural. It works. It's unpatentable, and it's threatening about six different pharma revenue streams. MOTC is basically your mitochondria giving the middle finger to metabolic disease. On the left, we have the MOTS C mouse. On the right, insulin resistance and prediabetes. Place your bets, folks. Nobody is pushing this because there's no money in peptides your body can produce anyway. Rumors swirl that it was shelved by institutions that didn't like where the anti-obesity research was going, i.e. away from lifelong drug dependency. Clinical use, of course, experimental. 5 to 10 milligrams sub-Q, 2 to 3 times per week. Best used fasted or pre-exercise for enhanced AMPK signaling. Again, for research only. SS31. SS31 isn't just a science project. It's a stealth grade mitochondria repair agent, first designed to treat rare diseases, but quietly capable of saving millions of broken bioenergetic engines. What it does binds to cardiolipin, a phospholipid found exclusively in the inner mitochondria membrane i.e. the bubble wrap that protects the electron transport chain, prevents mitochondrial swelling, oxidative damage, and apoptosis. That's fancy talk for keeps your cells from spontaneously dying. Improves ATP production and cell survival in high-stress organs like the brain, heart, and retina. Used in clinical trials for heart failure, dry-aged-related macular degeneration, 
Barth syndrome, and other mitochondrial myopathies. This is like the peptide equivalent of duct tape for your mitochondria. Why it's a big deal? Well, it has real human trial data. It crosses membranes like a biospy, restores mitochondrial efficiency by flipping the breaker switch on after a blackout. The drama? Despite solid science and promising trial outcomes, Big Pharma has done a great job of making sure it never reaches your medicine cabinet. Why? It's not profitable, people. It's too versatile. And, well, it works. Which is apparently a red flag if you're trying to stretch disease management into a multi-decade billing cycle. Got me? SS31 saves lives, but not shareholder meetings. Ever wish your mitochondria came with a roadside assistance plan? Say hello to SS31. Phase 3 trials? Quietly canceled. Despite strong biomarkers, the FDA just couldn't seem to find enough statistical significance in real-world improvement. What if the goal was never to cure, but to keep treating? Clinical use. Again, experimental, of course. 10 to 15 milligrams per day, sub-Q or IV. Typically used in mitochondrial disease protocols, neurodegenerative conditions, or cardiac recovery. SLUPP332, which we will call SLUP, or cardio in a capsule. SLUP is the molecular love child of a treadmill, a metabolic switch, and a mad scientist with a vendetta against cardio. This literally brings tears to my eyes. Discovered by researchers trying to understand how to mimic the cellular effects of exercise without, you know, actually moving. What it does activates estrogen related receptors. These boost mitochondrial biogenesis and fat oxidation, increases VO2 max. That's a measure of how much oxygen your body can use during strenuous exercise. Endurance and energy expenditure improves metabolic flexibility, your body's ability to switch between burning carbs and burning fat. How it works. Sloop flips on the estrogen-related receptors that normally only activate during intense physical activity. Think of these receptors as the emergency generators your body switches on during exercise to churn out new mitochondria and ramp up fat burning. Sloop hits the same switch without needing the heavy breathing, shin splints, or overpriced gym membership. By activating these receptors pharmacologically, it tricks your cells into acting like you just crushed a triathlon, even if you're still wearing your pajama pants. Net effect, more mitochondria, better endurance, higher fat burning capacity without having to suffer through burpees. This is a literally molecular CrossFit. Mice treated with sloop run twice, twice as far on a treadmill with zero training, boosts mitochondrial gene expression like it's trying to win a Nobel Prize. This is a serious overachiever. Potential use in obesity, metabolic syndrome, chronic fatigue, and elite sports performance. Conveniently taken orally. Yes, that's right. No needles, no vials, no complicated injection schedules. Just a capsule and go. SLUPP332 when you want the benefits of cardio without sweating through your overpriced Lulu. Slu, Lulu. Yeah, you can make that advertising work. Working smarter, not harder. Unless you are a mitochondrion, then you're on SLUPP332. Still classified as a research-only compound. Big Pharma isn't touching it yet. Why? Because if people could look and perform like they worked out without prescriptions, injections, or subscriptions, they might stop needing all that other metabolic junk. It's exercise and a pill, which sounds awesome, unless you were selling gym memberships or semaglutide. Some speculate that SLUPP332 is already being used by elite athletes under the radar because there's no test for it yet. No confirmed cases, but that's just what I hear from the bros. Clinical use. Again, research only. 
Oral dosing in mice so far, human trials, TBD. Effects seen in as little as seven to 10 days in preclinical studies. Humanin, the Lazarus peptide. Discovered in 2001 by researchers studying dying neurons, because what better place to find something that prevents cell death than inside a cell actively dying? Humanin became the first peptide found to be encoded not in nuclear DNA, but in the mitochondria, specifically the 16S RNA region. Not that you care, or do I? That's like finding a golden ticket inside your mitochondria's instruction manual. What it does inhibits pro-apoptotic proteins, blocking cell death pathways, improves insulin sensitivity, and reduces glucose intolerance, protects neurons from beta amyloid toxicity in Alzheimer's models, and oxidative stress enhances longevity and metabolic function in animal models. They call it the Lazarus peptide because it quite literally brings cells back from the dead or the brink. Why it matters. Found in high levels in centurions, like people who live to be over 100. Levels decline with age, stress, and toxic lifestyle exposure may play a major role in age-related diseases, including neurodegeneration, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Why you haven't heard of it? It's natural. It's unpatentable. It improves multiple disease states. And it's produced by your own mitochondria. So no billion-dollar marketing plan. Humanin doesn't just slow aging. It makes aging look, well, optional. One dying cell, one less chance. One mitochondrial message coming soon to a bloodstream near you. No one's producing it because you can't sell what your body can make for free. Despite early studies suggesting massive therapeutic potential, clinical development has been practically non-existent, probably because it's too good and too available. Clinical use, again, experimental. Research is ongoing. Synthetic human and analogs like HNG are being tested in labs, mostly animal models. Oral and injectable forms may be viable in the future. Quick bonus round. GHK Copper, the blue beauty queen with a mitochondrial side hustle. First isolated in human plasma in the 1970s, GHK Copper is a tripeptide naturally present in the body, but its most dazzling property, it binds copper a trace mineral essential for tissue remodeling, angiogenesis, and antioxidant defense. What it does? Stimulates collagen and elastin synthesis, making it a superstar in anti-aging and skin healing. Increases hair follicle size and thickness. Yes, it's the stuff in those pricey hair regrowth serums modulates the expression of over 4,000 different genes, many involved in inflammation, repair, and mitochondrial function, enhances mitochondrial biogenesis, ramps up antioxidant defenses, and helps reverse oxidative damage at the cellular level. Why it's more than skin deep. GHK copper is one of the few peptides that blends cosmetic, regenerative, and metabolic effects. Some research shows it can restore mitochondrial efficiency and reduce reactive oxygen species in aged tissues. Its synthetic benefits are only just beginning to be explored. New skin, new strands, new cellular energy. GHK copper, not your average peptide. Long overlooked outside the cosmetic world because, well, you can't exactly turn copper and three amino acids into a billion-dollar injectable. Most of its regenerative properties are underappreciated by mainstream medicine because it's considered just cosmetic. Clinical use, again, from what I've heard, used topically in hair and skin formulations, injectable or microneedling forms used in regenerative and aesthetic medicine, emerging applications in anti-aging and mitochondrial support protocols, I might have a liposomal form of this sitting at my desk, at my office, just saying. 
They say mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. Maybe it's time we stop letting the electric company decide how much power you get. Whether it's MOTC sneaking past the nuclear gatekeepers, SS31 patching up your cellular infrastructure, SLUPP332 putting cardio in a capsule, or humanin rising from the mitochondrial ashes to rescue aging neurons, one thing is clear. These peptides aren't just powerful. They're disruptive. And that's why you haven't heard of them. So share this episode before it disappears under a pile of redacted PubMed abstracts. Follow the peptide files for more molecular mischief. And remember, your mitochondria have secrets. I'm just here to spill them. I'm Dr. Kristen Lindgren signing off from the peptide files. Keep learning, keep questioning, and remember, you are in charge of your own healthcare. If you found this information interesting or entertaining, please follow the channel, like the video, and share it with a friend. Those things are annoying for me to ask, but as always, they really help the channel out. We'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.